as you just heard, Governor Haley calling for lawmakers to remove the Confederate flag from the state house grounds. This after nine black church members were gunned down. The suspect, a young white man who embraced the flag as a symbol of white supremacy. Well, this morning, lawmakers will be back in the state house for week two of their special session. Now, the biggest topic today will be the Confederate flag. Ashley is outside the state house with more of what we can expect to see today. Good morning, Ashley. So thank you so much. And again, that debate really sparking national controversy as well. Walmart now announcing that it is going to remove any items from its stores and website that feature the Confederate flag. Now, Walmart is the world's largest retailer. That announcement came just as Governor Haley called for the banner to be removed from the state house grounds. In a statement, the company says its goal is to not offend anyone with the products that it offers. And the call for the removal really stretches across the political aisle, across local, state, and federal levels of government as well. You heard Haley's stance and saw many lawmakers, including Graham and Scott, standing behind her. Well, perhaps one of the biggest people to call for it to be removed is President Obama. The president also used some strong language to make his point about racism in America. During a podcast interview, he said the United States has not overcome its history of racism, citing the use of the N-word. Take a listen. And it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say in public. That's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have to, societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. Again, a lot of people weighing in on this, not to be overshadowed, though we can't forget about the nine victims of this. President Obama and VP Biden will be coming to Charleston on Friday to give the eulogy at Pinckney's funeral and also to memorialize the other victims of that shooting. Obama and the First Lady got to know the pastor during the 2008 presidential campaign as well. State Senator Clementa Pinckney's body will lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda from 1 to 5 tomorrow. He will be laid to rest again at 11 o'clock Friday morning. That funeral service will be at the TD Arena at the College of Charleston. He'll then be buried at St. James AME in Marion. The University of South Carolina community came Came together yesterday to remember those victims. There was a ceremony at the Capstone Building on campus. President Harris Pacides also calling for the flag to be removed from the State House. It's now time for all of us and for our state to learn from the victims' families. It's time to ask ourselves if there is not some other place for the Confederate flag. Is there not a place? that would unify our people rather than divide our people. And that was just one of the many groups coming together. Newberry County also holding a candlelight vigil. Our Joyce Co. takes us there. there is Joyce Co. News 19 WLTX. Well, you can see all of the information of our coverage of this story, including timelines and memorial videos about the victims on WLTX.com. Mayor Joseph Riley says he's been overwhelmed, but not really surprised at the outpouring of donations for a fund set up for the victims' families. Donations just poured in to the Mother Emanuel Hope Fund and also the Reverend Pinkney Fund. Riley says even in the darkest of hours, he knew that Charleston would show love instead of hate. Now, if you're wondering how you can help, you can still donate at any Wells Fargo or also on the city's website. We posted that link for you on WLTX.com. It is now 607 new this morning. We have a live look at a house fire on Johnson Avenue in Columbia. You can see the Columbia Fire Department still there at the scene. Again, you are taking a live look. We're working to get more details for you this morning about how that fire started, uh, but some good news. They have told us that there are no injuries. We'll continue to keep you updated throughout the show. These groups that continue the fight, I think are marginalizing themselves from the mainstream. But that is where it's going to stay. The way we fixed it procedurally, it will never move again. Well, that was former senator and now president of the College of Charleston, Glenn McConnell. Yesterday, though, he announced that he supports removing the Confederate battle flag from the state house grounds. Meanwhile, a group says the debate over taking down the Confederate flag is fueling the race war that suspected killer Dylan Roof once. Yesterday, members of the South Carolina Sons of Confederate Veterans gathered at the flag. They say they want the flag to remain flying at the state house, but they won't reveal their plan of action until all of the victims are laid to rest. Attempting to use this horrible crime 
that occurred in Emmanuel Baptist Church to remove, to remove historical markers and monuments and to deface them is despicable, shameful, and disrespects them. We are told that they will announce their plan on Monday. Well, let's get you caught up on one of the other big stories we've been following. After an hour of deliberating, Judge Robert Hood declared a mistrial in the murder trial of Troy Stevenson. Judge Hood explained that an alternate juror was seen hugging Stevenson's family, even speaking with them. This after she'd been dismissed during deliberations. The judge interviewed jurors to see if they could still be fair and impartial in this case and discover that the alternate juror had been commenting about the trial throughout the entire week. Now, according to juror interviews, she said her mind was made up about the case from the beginning and that black jurors should stick together and not convict Stevenson. 11 jurors indicated that they had heard an alternate juror number 183 make a statement to the effect of this is ridiculous. I've already made up my mind. She made the statement out loud before deliberations early on in the trial. And counsels in favor of granting him this trial based upon juror misconduct that rises to the level of manifest necessity. Also making headlines today, James Holmes' defense opens its case. Holmes is charged with killing 12 people at a 2012 screening of The Dark Knight Rises in Colorado. Well, today they will argue that he's not guilty by reason of insanity. Holmes suffers from schizophrenia and his notebook from before the attack, quote, makes no sense, according to his attorney, Dan King. Defense lawyers are also expected to highlight a 2013 video clip in which Holmes in an isolated jail cell ran into a cement wall. Some sad news to report after after spending months in the hospital, Bobby Christina Brown is now being moved to hospice. Her aunt says Bobby Christina's condition has continued to deteriorate. The 22 year old daughter of Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown was found face down and unresponsive in a bathtub in her home back in January. A deadly crash in Lexington County. According to its website, a car and tractor trailer were involved in an accident in the eastbound lane of I-20 near mile marker 45. It happened around 8 o'clock last night. All right, in your money headlines, you may have noticed more social media companies are hungry for a piece of the shopping action. You may have noticed this on Twitter. The company just launched product pages to highlight things that you can buy right on Twitter. Some businesses are also highlighting items for sale on Twitter as collections.